Hey there folks, welcome to this tutorial on Universal Auto Load, how to use it, and how do you add it to your own trailers and vehicles. Hey guys, first thing you're going to, going to do is need to go over to the uh, Mod Hub. Uh, you can also get this off of GitHub, I'll leave the link to both in the, the description below. But you're going to go and find the Universal Auto Load mod, and download that. Either you can download it directly, or through the in-game Mod Hub. Uh, there is some information in here, uh, and you can read through that uh, as needed, but it just gives you some information on the mod. Uh, so then, once you get it downloaded, it, it'll download, and you need to take that mod and place it into your mod folder. Now, if you actually open up the mod, you'll need some information. Uh, you can go here down here to a readme file, and if you open that up, uh, it's got some information here. It'll have some information here that you may find useful. Uh, just for your information, there are base game supported trailers and vehicles, base game vehicles that are supported. So once you install the Universal Auto Loop mod and enable it, these vehicles and trailers will have the functionality built in. So if you want to add it to a mod, that is pretty easy. Uh, there's some uh, information down through this readme file, I would suggest reading it, going through it. Uh, there's some things to note, but first things first, you need to get your mod. So what you want to do is when you get your mod, is you have it on your desktop, uh, then you're going to unzip it. So I do have the A2 Studios 20-foot gooseneck trailer here, so I do have an unzipped version here. We'll open that up. So the first thing you'll do is go to your i3d file and open it up with Giants Editor. If you don't have Giants Editor, you need to get it. So you have to have Giants Editor to figure this mod out and to customize it. So we're going to open up Giants Editor and you'll see the trailer appear. And we're just going to zoom in. This is not a Giants Editor tutorial, but I will tell you what I'm doing here, right holding route right mouse button and using the W will zoom in or move move forwards same uh, all of these while holding the right mouse button W A S D so your normal keyboard movement commands there uh, you can hold your right mouse button and then pan your mouse so that's how you can do that you can also use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out but the first thing you'll do is go up to the top here of the menu, create primitive cube. And a cube will appear. Now in the guide, if you go back to your readme file and scroll all the way down to the bottom, there is a section here that, that will kind of go through what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm actually just going to move that off to the side. And show you how I do it. So you have your cube here underneath the trailer and in the guide it says to set your translate to 0.5. Well I'll show you what happens when you do that. We'll go to translate your translate y 0.5. Okay so the cube's still under the trailer. It does no good. I would suggest make it one. That way the cube shows up and you can see what's going on. Now if you don't know how to adjust things in Giants Editor. Uh, the little blocks here on the end of your axis arrows, your blue is your Z, red is X, and green is Y. X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. And the, the uh, little square boxes will let you expand the axis. And then if you click on the actual arrow line, you can move that axis, okay? So what you don't want to do during this exercise, for the most part, is that. You're totally going to focus on this. You may adjust this. That's the only thing, okay? So let's get these back to zero, zero, one, and zero. All right, so what you're going to do, you start out with, I usually just start out with my Z axis, and we're just going to drag it out. All right, so 
you see I'm almost to the back there and I'm really close to the front. So what I would suggest you do is use your movement keys and zoom in down over here so you can see there. Now I do have a gap there and that is a good thing. I could probably squeeze it in just a little bit more, but that's about as close as I want to go because what will happen is if you have this all the way up against the wall like that, it's going to load, it's going to hit that and your bells and your pallets and stuff are either going to tilt backwards or it's going to mess up all of your loading. So I would just recommend leaving a gap there. And then you can zip down here to the end and we're looking pretty good. We could bring this further back if we wanted to right up near the edge of the ramps. And if you wanted to do that, you could adjust your Z back a little bit probably there and then come back up here to the front and then grab it again. Grab it again and drag it pretty close. And then we can check back here again. And it looks like if the ramps open and close, they're not going to hit. So that looks really good to me. And then we're going to come over here and grab the block on the red and you can bring this out if you want it to hang over the edges a little bit depending on what kind of trailer you have how wide it is you may want things to hang over like your bells or things like that no problem but I wouldn't come way out here uh, if you want to come out a, a, a little ways you can do that but I would recommend that you come to the edge come to the edge and then just back up just a little bit that way your straps are going to look good. You're not going to get a bunch of clipping through your pallets and bells and stuff. So uh, bring it to the edge. And then depending on how high you want to stack this stuff, you're going to adjust the green one here, which is your Y. You can drag it up as high as you want to, but I want to caution you, these pallets, big bags, bells, all this stuff is loading. It's loading those things with the weight on your trailer. Uh, this is not like the trailers we've had that auto load and create a, a virtual uh, item that sits on the tra trailer just for visuals with no weight, no mass. Uh, you're gonna have the weight and mass on this trailer. So it's gonna drop it on there, strap it in, and it's gonna be heavy, okay? So if you stack these things too tall, your trailer is going to be way too top heavy. So I would not recommend going very high. Uh, the best way to gauge this is, is use this trailer in game. I'd bring it in game first and stack a couple pallets, maybe a couple bells and kind of see about how high you want. So, you know, if you have two pallets stacked and it's this high, you know, roughly this high above the, the uh, front of the trailer here, well, then you can just stretch this out just a little bit more and then you should be good. You fit two pallets in there. Not There's not enough room for three and it will be good. If you, if you come way up here like this, you got four or five pallets stacked. I promise you, you're going to regret it. The trailer's going to be too top heavy. So don't go crazy with the, the Y scale. I promise you, you will be reducing it. So we're just going to go with that right there, a little bit over the front. I think that that should get in two pallets, maybe something like that. So we are done in, in Giants Editor. There's nothing else you need to do, but don't get rid of Giants Editor. Just leave it as is. Go back over to your mod folder and open up your, your, your XML file. Not the mod description one, but the actual uh, XML for the trailer. So we're going to open that up and here in your XML, I just normally scroll all the way down to the bottom till you get to the ID3 mapping. And I just come up right here, enter in a couple lines just to give me some space. And then what you're going to do is come back over here to your readme file. Now there are two, there's two uh, sections of code here that you can import. I would recommend if you just want the basic loading feature, this one here. If you have a uh, maybe like the big crone trailer that has the curtains on it or a box trailer, something uh, that needs to be opened up before you use it, 
Well, this one has some configurations. They give you those options. Uh, if there's some folding or curtains, different things that you can set up. So um, there are parameter definitions down here. I'm not going to go through all of those because I am going to focus on this one here, the first one, the very basic. Now, what you're going to do, and this is where you may mess up, don't copy all of this because in your XML, you already have that. So, so you don't need to copy all of that because the vehicle and vehicle is already here. That starts here, vehicle. And then down at the very end, vehicle, it closes it out. So if you are copying vehicle to vehicle and pasting that in here, that's going to cause some problems. You actually just need that part, the universal auto load to universal auto load. So we're going to copy and paste that into our file. Make that look right there. We'll just do a little bit of movement there. It doesn't matter. It's just for aesthetics. So we have our code in here. Now, this, these numbers are just example numbers. They're not going to work with your mod. So this is where Giants Editor comes into play. The whole point of us creating that cube in Giants Editor is so that we can get these numbers. So if you come back over here to Giants Editor, we have our translate X, Y, and Z, and our scale X, Y, and Z. The first three here, that's your translate X, Y, and Z. And then these here are your scale. So tr translate, we have zero, one. So zero and one. And then negative zero point zero six six. And then our scale is two point five seven. We'll put that in there. Three point three six five. Then we have 6.931. And there you have it. That's it. So now that loading area is defined. So what I do in order to keep these separate, and you can do this however you choose, I just usually go up here back up to the top of the XML and right here where it says 20 foot gooseneck trailer, I just put uh, something like UAL, Universal Auto Load. Um, but for this example, I'm just going to put TUT for tutorial. And then you're going to save it and close that down. Back here, I'm just going to go back over to my mod description and do the exact same thing 20 foot gooseneck trailer tutorial. Save that one. And we'll close both of those. Now at this point, you could go ahead and select all your items and rezip your file. If you choose to do that, you can. Uh, I am actually not going to do that. Uh, at this point, you can close down Giants Editors, just file, exit, and no, do not save. If you save, this cube, <laughs> this cube's going to show up in game. Don't do that, okay? So I have my mod down here, 20 FS22, 20 foot gooseneck. I'm actually just going to rename that folder and just put TUT at the end of it as well. That way I know that this particular mod is for the tutorial. So let me get this. So we're just going to drag this over into our mods folder. Let's close this down. We're just going to drag it into our mods folder. So there it is, 22, FS22, 20 foot gooseneck TUT. Now it is not zipped, doesn't matter. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So we'll hop in the game and the mod should show up in our list. So if we look down here, I got a little test map here. Uh, let's see, 20 foot gooseneck trailer. I have everything there. Yep, there it is, 20 foot gooseneck trailer TUT. There's the, the unedited version of it. And here's my version that I had created that I'm using on one of my game saves. So whatever you name it will show up. So you can actually have multiples, multiple different configurations. So we have the 20 foot gooseneck trailer, TUT. All right, so we're here at the uh, dealership. I've already got a truck and I bought the trailer and 
got some bells set up here so let's go ahead and see what it will do if everything is built correctly we should we should be able to load up here so if i click open the f1 menu there and as we pull forward yep see we got the left shift for start loading where did it go yeah start loading left shift r how about that isn't that cool now check that out so no more will fit because because if we stack a bell up here another bell and stack this up right here this is actually taller than what I made my cube so what you could do that takes a little bit of testing sometimes but you could go in and either just add some numbers to that axis that Y scale or you can go back in and re redo your cube I would just recommend going in and adding a little bit to the XML on that that Y scale and uh, just tweak it until it works you can create a little test map and figure it out so that works really well uh, if we un want to unload you just control or shift I and there it unloads if we come over here to these big bags and I think I bought lime here let's see yeah so just to give you an example of the weight if you watch the trailer when I load it uh, it's, it's putting some weight on there so it is on there um, <laughs> there's some weight so be careful you don't want to stack too tall too high uh, you'll have some issues but get where you want to go shift I and it is unloaded easy as that so that is how you add universal auto load to a trailer now you know if you wanted to have it go in the back of this bed you could do do the exact same thing to a vehicle so a lot of options a whole lot of potential so i hope you found this tutorial useful if you did please be sure to click that thumbs up button subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already click the bell for all notifications and leave me a comment below if you found this useful i'd certainly appreciate it thank you guys so much for watching Hope you have a blessed day.